Welcome to PR Ministries. My name is Robert Paris. In this episode of Ignite, I want you to catch the fire of heaven and recognize that God is in the restoration business. Right now, you might be in a situation where you need your marriage restored, you need your finances restored, you need your family restored, or maybe something else restored. God is in the business of restoring. The call is for us to return and to repent. The call is for us to allow Him to do surgery on us. I'm working on a video on the Moravian Revival. And in that revival, there's a group of people that were converts from Hoss's Day. These converts become a people that are broken. They are hanging on by their nails, struggling to survive, suffering severe persecution. They have lost their identity and they are forced to flee. Many of you may be in that same situation where you're broken, defeated, hanging on by your nails. You've lost hope and you're wondering where is the God that your generation, your previous generations talked about, your parents talked about, the, the God you see in the Bible, the God you see moving elsewhere. Where is the God? Well, God has a divine appointment for you. And in this hour, He wants to turn up and restore you, just like He took these people. And He brought them to a place, a sanctuary. And the first thing He began to do was work on the things, the issues in their life that hindered the power of God moving. God wants to first get into your life and address the issues that are hindering the power of the Spirit moving mightily so that He can restore you. They had to learn the, about disunity and that uh, dead religion that they were following. We often do all these religious things, works and everything else, but it's all dead. Where is the living relationship with Daddy God? We need to come back and get a revelation of the blood, that the blood gives us access to the Holy Holies, where you can come in and know Daddy God. Prayers, the, sorry, the, the, the power in prayer is based on the relationship you have with the Father God. And the blood of Jesus gives you access to Him and gives you the ability to be sanctified, cleansed, so that you can have prayer answered. You can stand before Him with a heart that condemns you not because of the blood of Jesus. And you can dare to say that despite your circumstances, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because my Father is for me. And if God is with you, who can be against you? It is time to get ignited by the Spirit of God who seeks to liberate you and remove everything in you that is a weight and hindrance and stopping you running the race with endurance. According to Joel chapter 2, he wants to restore to you everything that the enemy has stolen and taken from you. I encourage you to stand on that promise in this hour because the Holy Spirit, as it begins to move in power, wants to make you a witness that He is the God who restores. He will restore your family. He will restore your marriage. He will restore your finances if we will learn how to surrender. As I look at the heroes of faith, and I look at the revival in Moravia, or the Moravian people. They had to come to a place where they emptied themselves of themselves. That care, the worry, the burden that has oppressed you and held you down, you must lay at the feet of Jesus and enthrone Him. Until it is Him that we lift up and not the burden or the problem, we will never see the power. I encourage you daily to take time at the beginning of the day to rejoice, delight yourself in Him, deliberately rejoice in Him. The Word says that we are to leap for joy, sing for joy, shout for joy, deliberate actions to see the joy of the Lord released in our lives. You need that joy because that joy is your strength. And when the world sees a joy that they can't comprehend and they cannot take from you, it challenges them and will begin to provoke them to jealousy. God wants to see His kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy, manifested in your life. If we are praying for revival, revival starts in us. That's called getting ignited. God wants to demonstrate in you His kingdom. He wants you to hunger and thirst and see it manifested, His peace, His joy, His love. He wants you grounded and rooted, not in the burden and frustration and cares of life, but in love. 
In the Holy of Holies, when you come in there, there's the mercy seat and everything bows to the, the seat of mercy where it's the heartbeat of heaven. That at the heart of God is His tender compassion and mercy and His kindness. He so desperately loves you. He so desperately wants to restore you. It's even more than you desire it. He just needs you to get out of the way. He needs you to surrender and trust. John 14.1 says this. Let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. It's a simple trust. It's not some complicated thing. If we come to a revelation of just emptying ourselves of ourselves and daily starting your day by casting that care, that burden on the Lord God and trusting in Jesus and standing and honoring the blood that because of the blood I am an heir and co-heir with Jesus, that I have access to come boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace at the point of need. That the God I serve is the God of the, who wants to restore all things. He's in the restoring business and He's restoring me. And that the promises of Joel chapter 2 are mine because I am declared, according to Ephesians 1, 6, acceptable in the beloved. I am accepted, made worthy of love. I don't care how you think. I don't care what you think about yourself. I don't care how you see yourself. God declared that you are accepted and worthy of love. You need to bring every thought, emotion, memory captive to Him. Every hurt captive and laid at His feet. You need to stop carrying the hurt, the burden, the care, the worry, and the memories, and entrust them to Jesus. And then seek from Him the wisdom on how to walk it out. Trust Him. And trust the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you. And if you slip, get back up. Get ignited for God. Become radical for Him. Trust His Word. Get back in His Word and begin to pray like you never did before. Pray until you get into the Holy of Holies. Be unsatisfied with an outer court or an inner court experience. You've got to get in the Holy of Holies. You've got to linger a little longer. I want you to know this, the devil does not understand the word patience or perseverance. That is why God calls you to patience and perseverance. If you will understand the power of persevering in faithful prayer, not repetitious prayer, but holding fast your stand of faith, trusting in Him and being patient and rejoicing in the midst of it all, keeping your eyes on Jesus, not on the storm, getting your eyes off of your marriage, your finances, and get your eyes on Him, and letting the Holy Spirit liberate you and give you wisdom. Because I want you to understand, God has an answer. But you can never hear the answer as long as you hear the noise and the voice of life and the concern of life. So it's time to get ignited, to get consumed by the fire of heaven and get radical for Him. I am encouraging you, I'm provoking you to make a radical change, to press into the Holy of Holies and be changed. Let the Spirit have His way. Surrender all, yield all, and give your all. My all for His all. That this day can be the day of salvation for you. This day you can mark in your calendar as the day of the beginning of the restoration in your life, in your marriage, in your finance. Today is the day I get caught with the fire of heaven. If the early church on the day of Pentecost got turned around and God was able to use them so powerfully, nobody's, and turn the world upside down. If God could take these Morav Moravian people and He could heal them and then pour His Spirit upon them and take them from a people that were running from their enemy to a people that ran to the battle and won mighty and great victories. They became one of the greatest missionaries that went to everywhere in the world. God can restore you. You may be clinging on right now. You may be in a place of absolute desperation. And He may, like the Moravians, bring you to a place where they first come uh, um, to herd hut and it's a swamp and it's not what they wanted but God says trust me sometimes he brings you places it's not what I wanted trust me I'm about to restore you I'm about to change everything surrender when you come to the place of surrender everything begins 
to change. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I raise up these people. I bless them. I come against every sickness and disease, Father God, and declare that you are the Lord, their healer. And I rebuke that sickness and I command their body to line up with the word that you are the healer, Father God, and by your stripes are healed and made whole. Every spirit of oppression, depression, leave them. And I declare you are the God who restores them. I decree that your joy and your peace would flow and pour into them. And Holy Spirit, come. Change them, transform them, saturate them, marinate them. Let the life and that power that raised Jesus from the dead get into every part of their being and so consume them until they are radically changed and they are no longer just a normal Christian, but they are a radical on fire for Christian. World turner upside down. Father God, a voice for you. And I bless them and I encourage them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Be blessed and be ignited for Him.